Hi, my name is Teresa from Southern Biological and today I will be demonstrating the use of an enzyme, pectinase, to maximise the yield of juice from apples. This is a great crack for teaching about enzymes because it has real world applications for a product with which most students would be familiar and it gives a small insight into manufacturing processes. You can discuss with your students that pectin is a structural molecule in the cell wall of plants and a reason that young fruits are so firm. As the fruit ages, pectinase, the enzyme, breaks down the pectin and the fruit begins to soften. This is a cells prac, perfect for year 11 or 12 and should take about 45 minutes to complete. For this experiment, you will need apples, pectinase, 70 ml vials, or you can use small beakers with parafilm. You want a pestle, or today we're using a spoon, glass stirring rod, plastic pipette, a funnel can be glass or plastic, filter paper, measuring cylinders, a water bath and a timer. You will need to use your standard personal protective equipment such as lab coat and safety glasses. Now if you spill the pectinase, just make sure you wipe it up with water and a paper towel. Don't allow it to dry out or it can become a fine dust which may be hazardous if breathed in. And don't eat the apples or drink the juice. Foodstuffs taken into a lab should be treated as chemicals because of the risk of contamination. Our enzymes are usually kept in the fridge and will last about a year after purchase. To prepare for this prep, cut the apple into small pieces around about two to five millimeter cubes. Use the whole apple, including core and peel. It can help to put the apple pieces into the microwave after cutting them for 20 seconds or so to help make it easier for students to crush them. If you do this, don't add water as it will add unnecessary liquid. Your students will need about 50 grams each or about half of a smallish apple. If you prefer, you can buy tinned apple or apple sauce. This will give you more juice at the end, but you do need to check the ingredients because if they've been thickened with starch, the experiment will not work. The next step in lab tech preparation is to dilute the pectinase to 50% by adding equal amounts of water and pectinase. your students is to label the vials. Label 1E for experiment and 1C for control as I've done here. Then add 25 grams of apple to each vial, keeping them as even as possible. Next, crush the apples. Don't take too much time. It doesn't need to be apple sauce, but it will help increase the yield of the juice. You can use a pestle or a spoon or perhaps a Ziploc baggie with something heavy to crush it. Into your control vial, add two mils of water. And into your experiment vial, add two mils of the diluted pectinase. Give them a stir. Now be careful not to mix up your glass rods as you don't want to get any enzyme into your control vial. Into your control vial. Once you've done that, put the lids on them and pop them into a water bath for 15 minutes at 40 degrees. While your samples are incubating in the water bath, set up your measuring cylinders. Again, mark one E for experiment and one C for control. Place the funnels into the measuring cylinders. Next, we're going to fold the filter paper to fit into the funnels. After the 15 minutes incubation is over, take your samples out of the water. As you can see, my vials have fallen over in the bath. And that's why I prefer to use vials with lids rather than beakers with parafilm. Next, we're going to empty the appropriate sample into each funnel. 
Control here, going into, control there. And I'm using my control glass rod. An experiment for experiment. I can already see there's a lot more juice in this one. Now we let them filter through for 15 minutes and come back later to compare the volume created by each. After 15 minutes of filtering, you should have substantially more juice from the experiment sample than from the control. In my case, I got three meals out of the experiment and pretty much nothing from the control. Actual results will vary depending on the temperature of the day the variety of apple, as some are juicier than others, the age of the apple, how much it's been crushed to start with, that sort of thing. You can have your students calculate the number of mils they get per gram of apple if you want. And if you collate the class results, you can calculate the average and variance as well. We have demonstrated that the use of pectinase will increase the yield of juice from apples. Other variations on this experiment include comparing different varieties of apples or incubating your samples at different temperatures or using different pH levels. Or you can compare cooked versus uncooked apples or crushed versus uncrushed apples. Another option you might like to use for the leftover apples is to keep them for another class to demonstrate the way a different enzyme, cellulase, deals with leftover plant materials in the manufacturing process. And this concludes our experiment. Thank you for watching. For more information, explore our website or feel free to give us a call.